All right, folks, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Super Nintendo emulation on the Android platform. And I'm also going to, going to be talking about alternatives to the Android platform for handheld devices. So, Super Nintendo on the Android. This is going to be a tough pill to swallow for emulation enthusiasts because 100% accuracy or the best possible experience for SNES emulation is simply not there yet on current handheld devices unless you have um, an handle say that runs at 3 gigahertz or something if all you require is speed that is not a problem however speed is only one component of a game you know sound timing visual tricks build a major portion of a game as well so you need all of those to get the best possible experience I mean imagine playing Halo or Doom broken sound with broken sound effects missing colors or blood effects it would simply not be the same game so in this video I'm going to be testing out four Android emulators the Super Retro 16 the SNES 9X EX Plus the SNNES the SNES Droid and the game I'm going to be using is Batman Returns for the Super Nintendo so let's start with Super Retro now each one of these emulators has other features which I'm not going to go into I'm just going to focus on emulation and sound accuracy and some do's and don'ts of emulators so let's load up Batman Returns right here so notice the sound in the beginning you have to uh, pay attention to the, s the audio in this right off the bat when you heard those bikes come out they, they didn't sound like bikes at all and you can notice the sound is a little bit compressed. The reverb is also missing from the audio. You notice there's no reverb at all. And you might also notice some crackling. The bass is also a bit too compressed, so you can't really notice the bass as much. I'm sorry, I'm not playing well because I'm using touchscreen controls for this video. Notice that bike, that did not sound like a bike at all. Notice this tin can. The tin can sounds okay, but the bike just sounds weird. So, let's try SNES 9X EX Plus. So notice the sound in this. The bike sounds accurate, and the audio is still a bit compressed. You can hear a little bit of the reverb, although not by much. Now let's try S-N-N-E-S. -N -N so right off the bat, notice the sound in the beginning and notice the compression level and also the reverb. So you can notice that the sound is a bit more open, however the bikes still don't sound right at all, unlike they did in the previous one. But in this one you can notice the sound is more crisp. You can also notice the reverb effects are really good. It's very hard to play with the touchscreen. Really, really hard. So there you go, the bike doesn't sound good, but you see how loud the tin can is? That's pretty loud, and it sounds very accurate, but the timing is off on the bikes, so the bikes don't sound good. So now let's take a look at SNES Droid. Notice that the sound on this is a little more balanced. You can hear the snare more clearly. It's not as open as SNNES. The bikes sound okay. You can hear a little bit of reverb. The bass sounds a little bit okay, it's still compressed, but it's okay. So, there you go. This is, I guess, the most um, 
this is the closest you can get to an accurate SNES emulation experience when it comes to sound on the Android platform. The tin can sound okay, not too loud, not too soft. And yeah, the reverb is alright, the bike sound okay. Uh, there is a bit of compression going on, but sadly you have to live with that. So, uh, from these four, what would I recommend? I would use SN and ES because even though the sound is off on the bikes on that, the compression is much less and I like the fuller sound experience. But if you want to be as close to accurate, you want to use SNES Droid because that actually has a good balance of all of it. The one you don't want to use is Super Retro which has a bunch of issues in it. It just doesn't uh, feel right. So what are the other things that you have to look for in emulation? Well, and go to settings so on video options you notice there are a bunch of settings over here the one that you don't want to use is image interpolation now this is also called image filtering by default it is always linear pretty much every emulator on the Android platform by default uses linear filtering or I think it's bilinear or linear no it's linear filtering even uh, PPSSPP Game Boy all of them now this is usually done because most Android emulators are aimed towards casual gamers who just want to pick up and play and they usually want a, a clear image you know they want image clarity and they just want to enjoy their game they're not looking to get into details but when you use linear filtering what actually happens is the image gets blurry but it gets cleaner and I'm gonna show you what that looks like so it's on as it is by default so notice the image is a lot cleaner. And now we're going to try it with off, which is none. Now notice the details in the background in Batman's suit. The image is a lot more crisp, and when you actually hit something, you can see the details, the fine lines. And I personally prefer this in retro games. It gives it a more crispy look. Now, what else do emulators do? Well, there is also something known as frame skip. Now, people who are enthusiasts, they know what frame skip is. But by default, frame skip is on auto mode on Super Nintendo emulators and Game Boy. Um, I don't know about the other ones. It just depends. Now, auto mode is okay for most games. But games that don't work well and require more than one frame skip, that's okay. But more than one frame skip, so I would say above two frame skips, that's a problem. Because you'll notice more jittery motion, uh, more sound jitters. And also, if, you, if you're playing a game like Gradius or Street Fighter, where the frames really do matter and you need that pinpoint accuracy, you're going to screw up and that, you know, that frame skip is not going to help you in any way. Uh, that's why it's preferable to play on, you know, original hardware or clone hardware, which I'm just going to, I'm going to get into that in a bit. So frame skip, you know, if your game runs fine, you probably want to turn it off. If it doesn't run fine, leave it at auto. Um, if you want to, you know, if you're playing RPGs, you can mess around and do it like two frame skip because they don't require accuracy. What's the other thing? Well, the one thing you don't want to do, which a lot of emulators by default do, this fortunately doesn't, is use what let's words okay so you don't want to use full screen so what actually what full screen actually does is it stretches the image so I'm going to show you what it looks like over here so this is what a stretched image looks like now this just looks wrong and feels wrong because you can see Batman's suit is stretched out the background is stretched out you don't want to do this ideally what you want to do is go by go with four by three and that is what you know old school games were programmed with in mind they were programmed for screens with four by three images now what I'm using here in this particular one a lot of old school emulators have this is I'm gonna use zoom integer only now this is going to give you a full screen but it's going to keep the aspect ratio as it should be thus giving you good quality here you go so it looks fine the aspect ratio is good it's crisp so this is what you want when you're playing you know if you want accuracy on your emulation or as close to accurate as you can be so uh, that is basically it on the Super Nintendo now I was talking about clone hardware and what you can do to get a good handheld experience so 
clone hardware is basically taking the hardware and it's uh, taking the hardware like a Retron 5. Well, maybe not a Retron 5. That uses emulators. It would be something like the Superboy or the, you know, one of those 8-bit handheld emulators which actually use cartridges. So what they do is they actually take the exact same hardware and allow you to use your cart. Only thing is it's more portable. So I would definitely recommend one of those if you want real accuracy. And a lot of people say, why would you use that? Well, you use that if you want really accurate emulation and you want the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Uh, another thing is the Android platform is pretty stagnated. I mean, they have so many devices with so many different parameters that you don't know which emulator is going to work well with which device that is where stuff like maybe say a GCW0 comes in which is a very very specific device or a Dingo A320 comes so programmers when they port it to that device when they pro, uh, port their you know their emulators they are actually looking for feedback only on that particular device which can be good in some ways because you get more accuracy or it can be bad because the device is not as open openly supported or it's not as mainstream so it there are trade-offs so what you have to do is decide what you're looking for how much accuracy you need what kind of sound you want uh, what kind of form factor you want you will never get the entire experience in one place. Some people say a PSP is better. Uh, now, a PSP is actually, for emulation, a dedicated device. So even though it's not powerful enough, it can do a lot of things, and then it can't do many things that Android can do. Like, you can't do Dreamcast on PSP. So, you know, there there's a trade-off. With all of these devices, there's a trade-off. So accurate emulation is very hard to get. And when you go to the Android or the Google Play Store, if you're an enthusiast and not a casual gamer, this video is aimed at enthusiasts and maybe help some casual gamers, um, what you want to look for in an Android emulator or in a Super Nintendo or any video game emulator is how good the sound quality is how good the visuals are you know whether it's missing many visuals whether it's using frame skip because there's a lot of junk out there and I hope this video helps you in some way choose what is accurate and best for you if you like the video go ahead and like it if you dislike it go ahead and dislike it but as always thank you for watching